Who's this big guy? Ah, oh, Watson, Dirt Shed Creations. Let's get on with it and do some stuff. Oh, bobblehead. Yeah, bobblehead. <laughs> no, Mark, today I'm really sad. Why are you sad? Because I'm too old to join a gorgeous baby competition. And I think I would have been the most baby gorgeous that there would have been. Is that some Father Ted nonsense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, uh, so, well, where are we today? Okay, so it's on with the prison door project. Uh, you know, look at that, how, like, seamlessly I go into kind of professionality there, right there, after a little bit of stupidity. Professionality? Is that a word? I think anyway, so. It is now. Uh, yeah, so we're on with the... Hi, right, Mum. <laughs> Stop crashing in on our shot. <laughs> Sorry? Stop crashing in and trying to get in on this. <laughs> Sorry, I'm yeah. sorry. Wow, go on off. Be off with Who's you. Who's coming out next? No, I know, but he won't even notice. <laughs> right, should we get on with it? Come on. <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me some things. I know. Use your talky hole. Okay, you ready? Uh, well, we're on with the prison door project actually, or we're back to the prison door project. So uh, we had a really good run at it yesterday. We've got loads of our steel kind of components all blanked out, ready to go. We've got a touch of gluing up to do today, a touch of jointing, some biscuit jointing. Uh, this is going to be quite an interesting kind of fact actually, because this isn't really a standard way of making a door. And I'm sure that a lot of people out there have got kind of um, ideas and uh, thoughts that they're probably going to put forward. So uh, we're going to make our door. We've, we've, this is a tried and tested thing for us. So um, yeah, we've got a gorgeous morning. So we're going to try and do some stuff outside. Uh, we've got a little bit of jointing to do right now. So we're going to get on with that first. Then we've got some, we're going to be doing some routing to put like a little cock bead on the plank door. Uh, and then yeah, we'll be probably on with a little bit of blacksmithing later on. So um, yeah, stick with us. And I think the best thing to do is just get on with it, innit? What do you think, camera boy? I think you should move. Yeah. Okay. Once this gets a little higher. What are you doing? Oh, hi. I was just polishing this little piece of metal. This is one of the problems about just this workshop at the moment. I haven't really got the time to... I know people would say we've got to make the time, but you know, to make the, uh, to do a big clean up and a tidy up. It's woodworker admin, isn't it? Well, it is, and I mean, I, I hate it at the moment, but uh, two things, we are building another workshop anyway, but secondly, it's a case of, some of this is rubbish that just needs cutting up for firewood. So, but we've got that much on at the moment. I haven't got like a day to sit and make firewood. So. Okay, so just give that a sweepy. All those filings will react with the tannin in the oak. We don't really want that. Nice flat surface for gluing up on. So, oh, right, okay. Yeah, that was close. Was it? Okay, mate, let's have a little look at this. So we know we're oversized, so what we're gonna do today is Let's back to some joinery, eh? You saw us yesterday. I don't... Do I need to really sit and go? Has that just dropped? Yeah. Is it on you? Yeah. Is it gonna... If you move, is it gonna be all right? I don't think that I need to sit here and say that. You just get on with it then. Yeah, I know. I think this, this boils down to the kind of... the joiner that you are or how you go about things, but... Um, what we need to do is get these into some sort of semblance of an order that seems to work for us, so... <coughs> Yeah, you see, there's a bit of there's a bit of flex in that oak, so we'll be able to pull that up. Those two meet really quite nicely, don't they, with a bit of clamping pressure on them. You see, I'm thinking wide plank at the ends, narrow planks in the middle. That's the one we just need to trim, I think. And then, bosh. So what you could do is we could cut all of these to length. But when we're jointing these up and we're sash clamping these together, uh, the, to get those ends to kind of like, you know, to meet bang on and look good, a oh, nightmare. Best thing I've always found, joint the door together, cut them top and bottom, get them bang on what length you need. This is over wide for what we want. So, um, 
Usually I'd make it over. We've got this great table saw here. We could just run the whole thing through the table saw. If we're talking about a mill or two, we could do it with an electric planer. I think what we're gonna do, because we can, is we're gonna get this actually machine bang on up to size. We've got a little piece of timber here, which is missing at the top. I don't know if you can see that. So in an ideal world, it might be worth losing a touch of that, uh, that thing, but I think what we've got here is that's how we're going to lay the door out. Nice wide plank, slightly narrower plank, same width as that one and then a nice big big plank there. So uh, let's get measuring and uh, yeah so I'll just pop, I'll just pop through there and uh, catch you in about an hour. No, it'll be done time. when you come back. Yeah, well if you do that while well, I'm... I'll wish in one hand and crap in the other and see which one fills up first. Okay, cool. Which one filled up first? The wishes. All the wishes. They came streaming out of me. How oh, did they? Yeah. Did they all involve turning your back on this? <laughs> turning your back on this great stuff that we do, that I do for you. <laughs> you do for me, eh? Yeah. Just for me. You'd be nothing without me, Watson. Oh yeah, but your maker films would look like garbage. Right, so we've, <laughs> we've got our measurement, 76. What have we got? 81.4. Okay, let's take the best edge on this one and knock something off it. Okay, so what we're gonna do with that is, oh, so let's take that down by, Two and a half centimetres, okay mate. Right, we're getting somewhere now. But I'm gonna to have to just move these back over here. As you will know, support the fence, stop it. Wind up the blade. Let's machine. You should. Okay, so what we've got going on there, actually an interesting point. It's all timbers full of stresses. So what we had going on there, let's, di let's diagnose some faults. <laughs> what? Am I shouting? Is that, a, is that a balls up? No, it's not a balls up. So essentially, you know, you, we've, what we've got here is a two inch thick piece of oak, French oak. That tree, as it grows, it, it develops all these st internal stresses and all of these things. So as we're cutting in there, what's happening is, and there's no real way around this, we need to take a, an amount of wood off this board. What was happening there is as this saw was cutting, the cut, the stress is pushing, here you go, you can see it, look. So here's our cut. And look what it's doing, it's pushing the timber against the blade and actually look at this step here. So it's also, that's under pressure there. If you look from this side you can see, and it's causing the blade to burn. So what we do... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you see that? Yeah. But you can see that it's closing on the blade, so hence why that wasn't cutting and it wanted to kick back to me. So it's worth knowing how and why and what to do to stop that. So how I would go about stopping that is... I'm just gonna pop and make a quick wedge. So I'll be a second mark, and then I will be back. Just give us a momo. What we'll do, we'll open that up like so. Gloves off.
So there you go, how much stress is that piece of timber under? And look at that, it's bending in both directions, so it's scooting off and up. It's almost, if you look down there, it's... Yeah? So there you go, that's the internal stresses in that bit of timber. Sorted. Uh, okay, yeah, so maybe that's you know quite interesting actually that that happened. Obviously leaning over the saw like that isn't the greatest. You just have to be exceptionally careful, but if you had a helper for example, camera boy, he could have put that wedge in. No, oh, I don't like putting wedges in. Because he's can't say that. I can say it, you just can't use it. <laughs> uh, you bad man. You bad man. You bad man too. <laughs> okay, Holmes. Okay, Holmes, let's pick up the poo bag. 20 and a half. So we're just going to put a nice edge on this board now because it is actually now at width that it'll go through the planer. So let's, uh, let's do that. On, wind down the blade. do is just trim down boards. So that's taken out that little bit of uh, chip that Mark will have probably shown you. So what I did there is I haven't taken off right to the measurement. So I haven't kind of just cut that board so that the measurements work for width, okay? We lost something like about an inch and I think there's about, yeah, we've got another 25 mil to take off. And why I did that is because I want to sneak up on it. I don't want to kind of like end up going overshooting the mark, but I also think there's boards here that might have a rough edge, might just need a touch of straightening. So we're going to lose those one or two mils. And actually also try and kind of keep experimenting with how we want to lay the boards out. Uh, so before we mark this up as our kind of how the door's going to sit, I think we just need to work out which boards we're going to have a little look at. I think we're gonna pop this one through again. Okay, no it's not. It's the other side, I think. So that side's our fault there. So it's basically got a little dip in it. Very easy to do when you're jointing over that jointer because it isn't a jointer. With a longer table, you'd probably have got rid of that. So that's leading in. That board's a bit funny. Can you just see that? So hence, just need to take a little trimmy, trimmy, bang, bang. You know you could still use that couldn't you you know that would still that that's got the spring in it to you know to push right doesn't actually have a twist it's just peeling off in it but like i say this is this is timber it is full of stresses so you know don't stress out don't stress out about it say it again and make it funnier uh Timber's got stresses in it. <laughs> I've got stresses in my life. Like mm. this guy pointing this camera in my gizzard.
out. This reminds me of um, the throne episode where we were deciding what wood to make the seat out of. You well, know that really boring episode we did? Yeah. It gets a bit false when you're machining and not just a Basically this is bellied out. So it's like here where it's high. So I wanted to do this off camera because it's just a ass. They're all absolutely fine, they'll join. That one will join. I mean, what you get these big clamps on, but I'm like, there's a belly in that. Where are well, it's got a belly in it, you say, Al? Yeah, no, this piece has here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna, we're just gonna do a quick little bit of machining. After we've moved all the stuff that's obviously in the way, we're gonna do a bit of machining to just take that belly out. And we're gonna do Speedy, Speedy Haraches, Sanchez, Machachos, El Bastardo. No more blade than we need. We're gonna power do this really quickly on that edge. Okay, how do we do this? This is how we do this. So what we do is we've set the planer to a very fine shade. So what we're gonna do is drop it in. Yeah, clamping pressure will close that. Okay guys, that is our, that's how the door's gonna go together. Uh, so now, what do we do? We wanna know the order of those planks. So we wanna kinda basically, we don't wanna be dropping the planks in different positions and all of that stuff. So what we do, classic old, um, classic old marking out technique, we just draw a triangle like that. Just on one side, so we know when they're all facing the right way. That's how we're going to join this table. Uh, this um, that's how we're going to join this door together. We'll just check parallel. So we are at look at that 76. And how much is it supposed to be? 76. 76. Uh, so there you go. That's why we don't just ho that's why we don't just hog into one piece of timber and take off our entire correction because it gives us that sneaking up on it kind of thing. You know, I'd call it, I think the term is progressive accuracy. So you don't get it right the first time, you don't get it right the second time, but you're taking off such small amounts that by the time it does just drop sweet, it's bang on where you want it to be. 76, that's our finished width. It's not our finished length or height. Um, we'll get to that later. Where are we now? Let's get our cock beads on. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, yeah, thanks. So we do cock beads on these. So, cock bead, cock bead, cock bead, and that's it. This do you one... want to explain to people what a cock bead is? I'm not going to explain it, Mark. Well, I'm going to show it. <gasps> there. Let off. the sun shine, the sun. 
So I've got a little set of jaws. Okay, so what's a cock bead? Here we go. Is this the one? Corner beading cutter. I don't know, is it? Maybe it's not even that. I don't think it's actually that cut. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, look, this is the cutter we're going to use. It's bearing guided <laughs> and it cuts a little radius on there. I call that a cock bead and people can call it what the F they want. <laughs> but to me it's a cock bead. Let's just get that nicely set up. So is this quite an important part of the... Uh... I think this adds, you'll see in a minute, suddenly instead of a tabletop it'll start looking like a door. I know you and you're not liking tabletops. Ali, you... Freehand routing. Yeah, is the name of the game. Is the way of the chief. Freehand routing. It's bound to end in some grief. So what I'm looking for here, I just want it to leave a little flat after it's cut the bead. No, I don't. No, I don't at all. Okay, how are we doing? I'm just checking for, you know, can I put, it's not gonna fall. Okay, good. Right, check our edge. We've got our little cross there, so we know we're machining the correct part. Let's put that on. Cocular beading is the way of the chief. Lovely little detail that, isn't it? You happy with yourself? Yeah, very happy. Happy, my man? Yeah. I think that looks fantastic. Uh, that cockbeat kind of also just allows for that little bit of kind of disparity uh, in the board's touch. Not that there is any, but it's like, you know, it gives you that millimetre, that millimetre and a half to kind of join them together and it just hides that kind of crack. So, yeah, so the next step really at this point is um, gluing this up and uh, yeah, so that's what we'll probably do next. Power G. This is such a rattly old piece of crud, but it does manage to do the job. So we'll get it set up. Uh, we know our width or we know our depth of timber is 45. So in an ideal world, that biscuit would sit at the halfway mark, which would be 
22 and a half. So let's get the slots for the biscuits cut. And then I'm double checking everything as we go here. So I'm kind of making sure that I can see where the triangle is. We know what we're doing. We don't want to jump ahead and kind of make a mistake now. We've done a lot of work on these planks since machining them up. Okay. Oh, muy está calor. So how heavy are you going to go on the sand on this? Uh, sand it? Well, hang on. Well, um, I mean, you know, that plain finish is almost there, isn't it, really? It doesn't need, it's not, this is the whole joy of this. Um, the planer has is, is got like four brand new blades in it. So the planer's really nice and sharp. We haven't got any planer burns in the top of those timbers as a result because it was feeding nicely and it wasn't jamming up. And I mean, to me, that's about there. I would say that this is probably gonna get like 100 grit, maybe 120 grit after that. But of course we're gonna go through, you're jumping ahead to the finishing, we haven't even made it yet. I'm just wondering. Well, don't wonder. Wonder about what's next in the process line. What's next in the process line? Gluing the bugger up. Gluing it up. Gluing it up with abandon. Gluing it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get the tile back. It's in here. Where that? Where that? I'm going to aim for there. How's that? What do biscuits look like? Now pick them all up, Watson. I am doing. That's our window. We have gone a bit heavier than probably, but you know, it is a door, it wants to last. This is where I think this will be a bit uh, quite interesting to see what people say, because we've made like three or four doors like this now. None of them have failed. Um, and I mean, you know, people might go, oh, well, you know, why haven't you done a full length spline? Oh, touch wood. Uh, why haven't you done a full length spline? Why haven't you done all these different things? Well, the glues, the glue we're using, I, again, it's salt waterproof. It's never let me down. So I'm like, well, you know, I'm not gonna change. Cutting a channel in there, you know, people would say, oh, we could just pass that over the table saw. I've done that in the past. You know, your tolerance on that line is all over the place. So trying to get a nice tight fitting spline is a pain in the backside. Yeah, you know, we could make a jig for the router. Or we could just use biscuits. We're gonna use biscuits, you know. So yeah, stick with us. See how people use biscuits. Okay, right now, I need to get some clamps, some glue, and uh, I'll be right back. Don't nick anything. There's always a drop scene. Yes, this is an interruption. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. We've got a bit of space to do everything we need to do. Something to protect the back, something to protect the front, and I think uh, we're using a glue that is 
water activated. So we'll just spray that, damp those sides. We're using a polyurethane glue. So what you are meant to do is now basically just, just for the sake of thoroughness, turn that over, turn that one over. Give those a wipe, make sure there's nothing that's going to stop us, nothing that's going to get in the way of those planks closing when we apply the pressure. Flip that over, dampen side, same on that one, because we won't see it again. Get those all ready, and apply dans la glue. It is a gap filling glue, this. Ooh, right, clamping. Okay, everything's set. This stuff is so horrible. I don't want to try and touch it if I don't have to. Get everything lined up. It's a gap filling glue, so it's going to fill gap. Line everything up. Okay, clamp those together. Here we go. This is where it might make sense how. Clamping pressure that we require. So that, that's what we have to combat, that lifting. So what I do generally Dirty mess you made. I know, well that. I knew it was going to do that when we did it, but. Oh, Mark, do you want to blow it off? Yeah. Uh, get the compressor on. Where is it? In the, there. Is it there? Yeah. We've just had our compressor go down, and the compressor's about two years old, and it cost us kind of, you know, nearly $500. And it's kind of like, you know, you can't help but be annoyed at that. It's three, it's three months old. We've just gone to it now to use it. You know, it's hardly had any use. We've probably had it on 10 times. We've got it set to provide 75 PSI for the plasma cutter, and then we use it as an airline on occasion. And uh, you were just gonna clean your camera down with it, weren't you? And bang, you know, it starts peeing air out of everywhere. There's air coming out of the on switch. It's like, what the hell's going on there? And you know, the problem is, is I could sit here for the next kind of four hours and get into it and take it all to pieces and have a look and try and redo some joints, but it seems to be an electrical fault, which is, you know, I can't get into the circuitry and mend that with a bit of wood glue. So we're now kind of unfortunate. We've had our day cut short and I'm probably gonna spend the rest of it trying to deal with some obnoxious person at the company where we bought it from. Uh, so we'll keep you posted on that one, but uh, yeah, it's kind of brought today to a bit of a poopy halt really yeah
Yeah. Where are we with the door project then? The door project's all gluing up. To be fair, that needs to be left alone. We've got all our steel here cut out, ready to go. Um, so I think what we'll do is because I have, because we have, sorry, because we've shown you how we make these before, I'm probably going to get on with those tomorrow. Tomorrow we won't be filming. Um, we won't be filming, but um, I'll be moving the project along. We'll be getting those kind of, uh, we'll be cutting the butterfly ties into shape hammer texturing all that, forging the heads on these, probably cutting them to length, and then what we're going to try something new is to actually clinker, properly clinker the ends of these. Um, so we're actually closing the rivets in the classic manner. Not hot, but clinkering, so you know, kind of sitting there. Uh, we've got a hammer over here, which I think will be absolutely ideal for that. So in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a riveter's hammer. So yeah, so we'll be kind of trying to kind of properly clinker the other side of those. And you know, even doing that, you do it does it does deform. So I think we'll have some success with that. But we are going to do a test before we actually kind of come to that point. So stick with us for that. Um, yeah, cool. So that's us for today. Let's fade out. Fade out. Oh. Hi, dream sequence. <laughs> Hi kids. Welcome to this week's episode of Chainsaw Play. Oh, I'm so glad that's gone. It was annoying the tits.